Management Accounting 26, Asset Utilization, Getting the Most Out of Your Assets, and a Comparison Between Railroads and Trucks for Shipping Costs. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, the email address, and our website, and the book Cost Accounting for Dummies that is now, <coughs> excuse me, now available out on Amazon and other sites too. So this is a blog post based on a Wall Street Journal article that I thought was interesting. And what the article discusses is asset utilization. Asset utilization, which I defined at the beginning of the article. Asset utilization marries, measures excuse me, management's ability to make the best use of assets to generate revenue. Because after all, assets, very broadly defined, the way I define it in the book, is anything you use to make money. So that may be equipment, vehicles, buildings, a brand name, anything. Companies, Some companies require a large investment in assets, and a railroad is a good example, as we'll see in a minute. <clears throat> so if we're going to write checks and incur costs, to buy assets, we need to recover those costs by generating revenue. So one way to recover that large cash investment is to use the asset, in this case, rail cars, to generate revenue. And eventually that revenue, sending somebody a bill and providing a service, will convert to cash, and you will have recovered your cash. So the Wall Street Journal article I saw I thought was great. And what the article discussed was a trend toward railroads and a trend away from using trucks. And this is spring of 2013. It was called Boom Time on the Rails, Railroad Capacity and Spending Soar. And you have to consider, first of all, why are companies shifting over to railroads? And there's some things happening that uh, you'll see that are causing this trend to occur. The first is we're having a big <clears throat> upswing in energy growth, and particularly shale-related crude oil. So crude oil that we're getting out of shale is rapidly growing. Well, fortunately for the railroads, many of the existing rail lines in the northern plain states, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Montana, etc., are where crude oil is being mined. So if you're a crude oil producer and you've got to get crude oil out of the ground and ship to a refiner or get it to a pipeline, why not just use the available rail capacity that's already out in your area near you rather than calling a trucking company? <clears throat> that's one big reason. The other is an, an efficiency reason and that efficiency is measured by fuel use. The article explained that a typical railroad car <clears throat> can move one ton, a one ton shipment, 500 miles on one gallon of fuel. That's pretty amazing. And that makes the railroad three to four times more efficient than if you were using a truck. One ton, 500 miles on one gallon of fuel. Now what's held back railroads lately is the fact that until recently they weren't always reliable. There were problems with reliability. The article describes, I believe it's UPS, being very demanding about on-time performance and how it took some railroads a long, long time to get their performance at the level that this customer wanted. They had very specific standards on on-time delivery, and for a while the railroads just couldn't deliver, and now they're doing a better job. Because if you put yourself in the business owner's shoes, the business owner needs a shipping company that's reliable, one that gets the goods to the destination on time. Because if not, you're going to have an upset customer on your hands, and that might even cost you business in the future if you don't get that product to the customer on time, which means that the person who's handling your shipment, the railroad or the truck, has to be on time almost all the time. Now let's think about this asset utilization for a minute, which again is all about 
Am I using assets to the fullest extent that I can to make money? And you can imagine that buying rail cars and engines is a risky proposition. Several sources I looked at said that the average replacement cost for a rail car, and a typical train might have dozens or a hundred rail cars on it, eighty-eight to a hundred thousand dollar replacement cost to go out and get another rail car. So I make the point that if you buy a rail car, you need to maximize the use of that rail car to make money, which means that rail car needs to be out on the tracks, loaded taking a good somewhere for a customer. And Union Pacific was one of the larger railroads, so I went out to their 10K, they're filing with the SEC because they're a publicly traded company, and I found some interesting statistics that Union Pacific uses to measure asset utilization. I'm going to list two of them here. The first is average train speed. It said the firm reported 2012 average train speed of 26.2 miles an hour, which was up 4% from the prior year. And that measurement, that statistic made sense to me because the faster the train gets to the destination, the quicker that rail car can be unloaded and loaded again for another client. Because once the rail car gets unloaded, the railroads completed their service, which is shipping the good and they can get paid and as I mentioned, the faster you unload the rail car, the sooner you can load it again and use it because this is about asset utilization for another client. So one was average train speed. How quickly are we getting from point A to point B? The other statistic was the length of time that the rail car sits in the terminal, which means it's not on the track shipping a good to somebody, and they call that average terminal dwelling, dwelling like being in a building. In other words, it's a measure of how that asset, the rail car, sits idle, not on the tracks, or it's sitting in the terminal because it's being loaded or unloaded. So it could be that the, it's not being used at all, the rail car, or it could be that the rail car is being loaded or unloaded. And in the 2012 annual report, said the average time was 26.2 hours. Now that's just coincidence that it's the same 26.2 that we saw in the miles per hour, just coincidence. And that that same average time, 26.2 hours, was the same as the prior year. So you might be wondering, well, why didn't that time improve by getting shorter? Why didn't we reduce the amount of time that the rail cars were sitting in the terminal? And Union Pacific explained that the rail cars carried larger loads in recent years, and that those loads take more time to to fill in the terminal, which means it takes you longer to get the rail car out on the track. So there's more business because we're carrying more stuff for clients. Well, that's a good thing, but it takes more time to load. So when you're thinking about asset utilization, one of the examples I always use was a plumber driving around town doing plumbing jobs for residential for residences, housing. And that if you've got a plumbing truck, you may have thirty to fifty thousand dollars worth of equipment plumbing equipment on that truck so it's a pretty expensive proposition to have both a truck and the equipment on the road so the game plan is let's do as many plumbing jobs as we can with that truck while it's out on the street so the next time you're thinking about asset utilization consider that railroad example that talked about how quickly do we get the rail car from A to B and how long is the rail car sitting in the terminal unused? To show you a couple other things, if you look at the website, here's the book Cost Accounting for Dummies. And you'll see on this page on the website that there's a link. And that the link will take you to the, uh, if I can copy it in, will take you to We'll take you to the page on Amazon.com where you can buy the book. And in fact, if you click on this tab, it will take you to a variety of locations where you can buy the book, not just Amazon, but you can see here on the right a lot of other places as well. If you use an iBook, etc. 
The other thing I wanted to show you was the courses that I continue to teach, which are the toughest accounting courses based on feedback from students. And as you see this come up, I teach small group live chats on these topics in blue, which are the topics that are most in demand by students. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.